Hey guys, welcome to Quinian's Budget Crafts. In episode 1 of Hero Kids Compatible Builds, we'll have to figure out where to start. I suppose the best place to start is at the beginning. This is the Block and Tackle, the Tavern of Rivenshore, which is the main city of the Brecken Vale where you start all of your adventures. Links to all of the materials used will be in the description below. Let's get started. This is a publicly available map of the whole town. We will do all of it eventually, but for now we just want the tavern. So first off, I want to share a couple failures here. I tried popsicle sticks and it warped bad. I tried coffee stir sticks and it warped too. So if you try something and it doesn't work, that's fine. Just toss it out and try something else. It's just foam. I'm going to use 3 quarter inch EPS foam, that's the white expanded polystyrene foam, for everything because it's cheap and widely available even if you don't live in a cold climate. Now you should cut it with a hot wire, but you can use a knife if the blade is brand new or at least still very very sharp and you don't try to force the cut. Just let the knife do the work for you. It's nearly impossible to cut a true 90 degree with a knife, but using a metal carpenter square helps a lot. You're also going to want to use a sharpie on this stuff because most pins will just rip chunks out. This game is based on paper maps, so all of the grid sizes are 8 by 12 inches. So just measure and cut that out of your EPS. This will be the building's footprint, but we need room for the walls that we'll make eventually. So measure out the difference ready board foam takes up. That'll be a quarter inch on each side. So now cut out a panel of ready board 7 and 1 half inches by 11 and 1 half inches. Go through and put a mark at 1 inch increments all the way around. Hero Kids is based on a grid movement system, so you will need a grid. Once the grid is down, mark one quarter inch from each corner all the way around on your EPS to use as a guide for the ready board. Dry fit the ready board to make sure it's going to sit in your guide marks. Now I'm going to stick the foam together using Super 77. It's a spray adhesive that you do not want to spray in the house, and if you spray too much it will eat the EPS. So take the ready board outside, just give it a little bit of spray, and then come back in and stick them together. Do not use PVA, white glue, Mod Podge, Elmer's, it's all basically the same stuff, it's all PVA glue. Don't use that. That is air drying glue, so it will never dry in the middle if you use that. You can use hot glue if you want to. Now, using a wire brush, just scrape down the foam to make the wood grain. Now, it's important here, you run the grain the same direction you plan for the boards to go. I did them straight across and it made the grid hard to see, so I suggest maybe having them go diagonal or something. Now we'll paint it up. You could pre-prime this with the paint and Mod Podge mix if you wanted to, but I found that that tends to warp this foam. I use nutmeg here, but you can really use whatever type of color you like. Thin it out just a little bit with some dirty paint water. I'm joking. I did do that, but you can use tap water or alcohol or a professional paint thinner, not paint stripper, that's different. Whatever you want, just thin it out some. It's pretty simple, just smear it all over and make sure you hit the edge of the boards. Now use whatever contrast you like. I went with King's Gold to do a little bit of highlighting. Do this while the brown is still a little wet, but not so wet that it comes off on your finger when you touch it. If you get too much in one spot, just smear it with a finger. The more random you make this, the better. It's supposed to add those lighter areas you see on real wood. High traffic areas are a good spot to focus on. Now cut in the boards. This ruler is one inch wide, so I just used it as the guide. Make one inch strips. Then go back and turn those into half inch strips. Make more even smaller if you want to. This tool here is a leather worker stylus. It has a pointy end on one end and a ball on the other end. You don't need this, but it sure is nice. If you don't have one, just use a ballpoint pen and run it down every cut to widen it. And now you need the individual boards. I used a stick cut off at roughly 4 inches as a guide for the first couple, and then the last few. Line up those marks with a ruler and cut away. Just remember that you're cutting every other board here, not every board. Once you're done, same thing, run the ball end or pin through the cuts. Now here I kind of messed up and went way off while cutting one of the boards, so hey, whatever, let's use it. Now it's a big crack in the floor. 
Widen it from both sides with a stylus or a pen, leaning it to one side and going back and forth to make sure it's really jagged. And here's where the pointy end is handy. At the end of each board, stab two little holes for nail marks. Again, if you don't have the stylus, that's fine, a toothpick will work. Also, I forgot to show this because I forgot I needed them, but you'll need some wall segments. It's the same idea as the floor, but on both sides. Also, maybe make some notes or use this video as your notes and don't skip ahead like I almost just did. Cut the grids first, then blackwash. So line up the square on your grid marks and carefully cut them using the edge of the square to keep it straight. When you do the walls, make sure to carry the board cuts over the side and put the wood grain on there too. There are two that are three inches long and one that's two inches long. Now blackwash it all, making sure to get in all of the little cuts. If some of the grid isn't showing well, you can run a small pen or a toothpick through it to widen it a little bit, just not as much as the boards. Okay, now let's make some furniture D&D Now to get style. the tables to the full one inch needed to match the map, we have to add a couple of matchsticks. You can put them however you like, I just thought it would be kind of cool to have them in the middle of the table as if it were expandable or something. You don't have to use hot glue here. Any PVA type will work just fine. I just like the hot glue because it's done in seconds. It does leave a bit of a mess though, so you have to go back and scratch it off with a fingernail or the stylus. The stylus is great for getting in the cracks. I like to put the glue on and then put the whole thing on the mat and push the sticks together to make sure I've glued it flat. Now just repeat that four times. Measure to two inches, however you prefer. The mat makes it quick and easy. Then using a box cutter type knife or some very strong scissors, cut it off. If you're using a knife, be very careful. Only use the kind with the solid blade. The snap off blades will snap and turn into razor sharp flying things and that's no good. Just make several passes until it cuts. You're not gonna get it in one go. Clean up the glue as needed. Now add a border around the bottom of the table. Whichever side looks the worst is good for the bottom. Just glue a matchstick on, leaving it sticking out long, and trim to size after the glue dries. On the long sides, you need to pre-cut it before you glue it. Now for the table legs, just cut a matchstick roughly into quarters. They don't need to be perfect, we'll trim them later. Put a blob of glue in the corner of the frame, and put the table leg in. Just sort of bump it around, keeping it straight until the glue hardens. Using a low temp glue gun here will speed this up. And there you go, a nice little table. Just trim any bits off the legs until it sits flat. And then repeat on the rest of them. Now if you're like me and you've got a little bit of OCD going on, you can take a bit of coarse sandpaper and just touch up the edges and the table top to make it all nice and flush with no extra glue on there. The glue will prevent the paint from going into the wood, so it's probably best if you do get that off. The glue will clog up the sandpaper very fast, so remove as much of it as you can with your fingernail or some other tool first. It also helps to knock the sandpaper off every now and again. There we go, all nice and smooth. Run something sharp like the stylus is pointy in down the tabletop seams if you want those individual boards to stand out. And now the bar. Two sticks isn't wide enough and matchsticks aren't long enough. So we'll put three craft sticks next to each other, figure out where the excess is, mark that, and then cut it off. I put the thin one in the middle again, but it's up to you how you'd like to do it. Glue them together the same as the tables and mark to three inches. And then sand it down for that smooth look. For the front of the bar, we'll put eight sticks together, making sure to square them up along the lines of the mat, and then glue another strip across the top of them at 90 degrees, again using the lines on the mat to help with this. Almost like making a fence. Then just cut along the edge of the support stick. You can clip the excess off with some sturdy snippers. Use a mini to figure out what height you'd like the bar to be and mark it. I think mine ended up being three quarters of an inch. About chest height on this many. Find out what yours was and mark it on the other side and then cut it. It helps if you have a support stick under it. 
I wouldn't use the clippers here because they don't cut very cleanly and you need both edges of this to sit flush, one on the bar and one on the floor. Okay, now to figure out where this front panel goes. I went about one stick in, maybe not quite to the edge though. Glue it on, making sure you keep the support board to the back and to the floor. You may not need to, but I cut a couple little support legs to help hold the bar up. Same idea as the table, little dot of glue and stick them on. Now we need stools. The drawing shows three on each side and one on each end. In reality, that's not going to fit. So we'll just do two on each side. Also, I don't want them knocked all over the place like in the drawing, but feel free to do it how you like. I'm using pre-cut three-quarter inch circles. You can just use whatever fits you best. If you do use these, they have a shiny bit of paper on each side that the glue doesn't really like to stick to and paint really doesn't stick to. Just take the tip of your X-Acto knife and get it under just the edge there and tilt the knife to the side. That'll make a big enough tab for you to pull the whole thing off. And now do a massive pile of stool seats. I used some barbecue sticks for the legs here. Just cut them around half inch, three quarter inch, somewhere in there, it doesn't really matter. You'll correct those later and you need a ton, so just cut a bunch of them off. Using a low temp glue gun, if you have one, put a good sized blob down and then put three of the sticks in there and wait for it to cool. Adjust them as needed while cooling to get a sort of tripod shape. And then set the stool down. Figure out where the high side is and trim the stick below the high side until it fits mostly flat. Check to make sure the height makes sense with the table. And then just make like 30 more of them. Okay, now these barrels. So I have a love-hate relationship with barrels. I love them, they add a lot to a scene, but man do I hate making them. So I didn't make them. DM Scotty, DMG Info, Max DM Crafts, I'm sure several others have a ton of fantastic tutorials, but I just cannot get it right. I got these on Amazon, but here's the guy's Facebook from the sticker he put in the shipping bag. It was an amazing deal of 42 of these for somewhere around 10 bucks. Now some stairs. Just put glue on the edge of a popsicle stick and put another stick on top of that, and repeat until it's 2 inches front to back. Measure the sides and cut it off. So, I'm not sure why 3 inches was stuck in my head here, maybe from the bar, but it's 2. Yeah, it's supposed to be 2 inches, and this causes problems. But that's okay, it just gives me a chance to show you how to roll with it and fix things like that. Use something pointy to dig any squeeze out from the cracks, and give it a little sanding to clean off the edges and maybe some wear marks in the middle. Paint it all up with some more watered down brown of your choice. So the other set of stairs. Here's the thing, the drawing shows them spiraling to the right, which makes sense with the building's design, but bothers me because most spiral staircases spiral to the left if you're going down them. Shadowversity has a video explaining why. So I'm doing it that way, you don't have to. Stack 8 of the wide craft sticks and cut them 2 inches, leaving the round end on there. Put them together with a clamp of some kind, then adjust until they're all nice and flush. Go ahead and make a mark. I put mine right in the middle where the rounded bits have hit the full width of the stick. And now keeping your fingers out of the way, drill a 1 8 inch hole and force a barbecue stick into the hole. It'll take some convincing. If you put the stick on your mat and push the sticks down with your thumbs, that seems to work. If it's just too tight and won't go, then use a different stick. They're not all the same. Fan those out. What seemed to work best for me to get 90 degrees was to match the corner of stick 1 with the corner of stick 3, then 2 and 4 all the way down. Then put some glue on the underside to hold it all together. To clean up the corner bits and make it round, just gently trim with the clippers or an X-Acto and paint it up like everything else. Get some yellow in the middle where the wear should be. You can even use some tan if you really wanted to to make it look heavily used. When you go to blackwash these, you want the wash watered down pretty heavily. It makes sense for the floor to be really dark, but not so much the furniture. You also want to be careful with those stools. The cardboard tops won't do well if you drench them, so set them in the area and just let them get hit with some overspray. Okay, the last thing on this map is this little water bowl thing. There are a few ways you could go about it. You could try to make it look like a bucket or stone. To me, it looks like a stone fixture on the wall, so I'll make that. 
It's one by one inch on the drawing, so cut out a one inch strip of ready board. Now cut four one by one panels. Set two panels on their edge on top of another panel and use that as your measurement for how much you want to cut off the one that the two are sitting on. Do that again on the other panel. You should have two that are one by one and two that are one by whatever the difference was. Make sure the short side panels are the right direction and glue them to the square ones, keeping the short sides to the inside so the end result is a one by one box. Just trim the top and bottom a little so it's nice and flat. So now that you've decided to do brick, you can do brick or cobblestone. For cobblestone, you can either draw on a ton of little rocks like this, making them as random as possible. It helps to go through and draw a bunch of large random ones and then fill in with smaller ones, or you can use a roller. I got this roller from Rumpel's Labs, but others sell them too. Just put the roller on the strip, push hard, and roll it out. If you're doing both sides like this will be, you're always going to have one texture that's worse than the other because it gets kind of flattened. Just note which one that is and use that for the inside. And if your texture's not showing really well, you can just go over it with a pin, making sure to bring the stone lines along the edges too. Stick the box to another piece of ready board and trim it off. Seal this whole thing up with Mod Podge and black paint. You can use a little toothpick stand to keep it off the mat. Once the Mod Podge is dry, go ahead and paint the whole thing in pavement. Then cover a little bit less with pewter. And finally a little antique white dry brush. You don't have to use these colors or even stick with a grayscale, it's just easy for me that way. Put some hot glue in there about halfway full and wait for it to set. Now paint some mid to light blue on the glue and wait for it to fully dry and then fill it the rest of the way up with glue. Once that's all dry, cover the top in some straight Mod Podge gloss. Now go ahead and cover the remaining white EPS with black and Mod Podge. Okay, now it's finally time to attach all this stuff. Figure out where this wall goes and then glue it down first. Next cut out the 2x2 two two section where the stairs sit and dig out the EPS as much as is needed to make the stairs fit flat in the hole, but don't blow through it. Just keep taking out a little bit at a time and checking. Once the depth of the hole is good, seal it all up with more black and Mod Podge. And just keep checking the map to get the positioning of everything right. The wall behind the stairs is a little short, but the stairs come up to the second floor in the far corner, so I guess that actually still kind of makes sense. If you want your stairs to come higher, you can add a little spacer in between each step to make them a little taller, but I wanted to keep everything at about one inch height so you can still see clearly. Just using a ruler as a guide to keep the cut mostly straight, go ahead and trim those walls off to match the steps. Just don't forget to retexture and paint those bare edges. For the six posts, just cut some barbecue sticks and dip them in the paint. You want the top end of six different sticks so that what you see is a nice flat sawn off end. While those dry, do the tables. With the tables and the chairs, you can just mash them into the foam a little bit, make them sit nice and level. Now stick the little water thingy there. And then add a ton of chairs. Like I said, just mash them into the foam to make them the right height and as level as possible. I thought the furniture ended up too dark after the black wash, so I went back and re-highlighted with some beige and more yellow. Okay, back to the posts. You want them the height of the wall, plus a little bit to stick into the foam. The foam is 3 quarter inch plus the ready board, so roughly 1 inch. That makes the posts about 1 and a half to 1 and 3 quarters in length. Mark them at 1 inch so you know where to stop pushing them into the foam. Then chop off the bottom, leaving somewhere around a half inch below the mark. Use the pointy end of one of those sticks to make your starter hole. And then put a little bit of glue on the post or in the hole and stuff it in. And you're done. See the mini can move around and sit on the stools and wait a second. Something's not right. Oh, those stairs. Yeah, they're not supposed to be that wide. You need to have two inches from the bar to that post and then the stairs are off of that post a little bit. You'll see why in a later module. So as you can see, it's impossible to remove them or the barrels without taking chunks of foam with it. So just cut along the grid line and rip the whole section out. 
See, this is where they're supposed to sit. Okay, no problem. Mark the edge of the stairs where the foam ends and trim the stairs with a saw. Trim all the foam that came out with the stairs off of them around the edges. And rather than work in a cramped space, I decided to just take out this whole corner. Stick some ready board in there and measure it. And then cut out the piece you need. Set the stairs on that piece and mark around them to cut out the spot for the stairs. If you still have some of the original floor under the stairs. I did. And now just hot glue it all down. Remark your grids, your board, do the brush texture. Paint it brown and highlight. Then if you water down your black wash, you're going to have to add more paint back to it to make it look like the original stuff you sprayed the floor with. Now I don't want to spray this because then I'd be spraying areas that already have wash and it would make them way too dark. So I used a brush that could soak a lot of it at once and just sort of blotted it on. Now put the post back where it belongs this time. And then I thought it might look nice to have the tables and the bar have a glossy top, so I put a little Mod Podge gloss on them. The barrel rings needed to be silver or metal of some kind, so I used a little metallic paint here and a super tiny brush or a toothpick to do that. It helps if you lay the toothpick flat on the band and then spin it around. But that's still a terrible way to do this. I have a much better method for this in the next video. Anyway, once you're done with that, glue them all down and widen the lines if needed. And now you're actually done with the first floor. Next time, we'll make the basement. It's much simpler and faster, I swear. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the little bell so you know when the next one comes out, and I'll catch you on the next one.